Welcome back to the Defiant Spirit on Baruch Levy, also known as B, creator of the Defiant Spirit and the Defy Your Number Enneagram system. And in this podcast, I talk about all things Viktor Frankl, author of Man's Search for Meaning and 40 other books and founder of Logotherapy. I'm a logotherapist, meaning centered, not only therapy, but healing, living, um, a life of meaning, and then brought together with the Enneagram. And the Defy Your Number Enneagram is based on this great man's work and example um, through the lens of the Enneagram. The Enneagram is an ancient personality roadmap of how to live our lives, or as Dr. Franco would say, to stop living in reaction and to start living in response, to become responsible, response-able, able able to choose our response. So in this series that I'm doing, um, Enneagram at the movies, I'm going through all nine types, and I'm sharing with you the Enneagram page... uh, from my book, I have a ebook on each of the nine types that I, I utilize with clients, and I also offer online to, as a DIY journey through the Enneagram. And so, if you're an Enneagram four, as we're exploring today, the individualist, sometimes called the romantic, the creative type, um, this is from that particular ebook. And these are characters um, from movies and television shows that bring in this case, Enneagram 4 to life. So the past three, I've done Enneagram 1, 2, and 3, and I've done the same thing. So you can listen to those, and you can listen to this one and continue on the journey. And the reason why I do this, A, is because um, the Academy Awards um, are upon us or were upon this, depends on when you listen, and it just kind of jogged my appreciation for the role of movie, cinema, television in our lives. It's um, oftentimes gets portrayed as a bad rap, as, you know, empty, as sort of intellectual candy. Certainly can be anything, too much of anything um, can be a bad thing. But it also can be a great vehicle to convey ideas, to convey cultural sort of understandings, references that we, you know, we share and we can create a, a shorthand, if you will, of, you know, if I say to you, um, you know, Star Wars, like we can create a shorthand of what Joseph Campbell talked about as the hero's journey and talk about that. So there's some really great uses for for video and um, for movies. And I, I think that it brings to life sometimes what can be esoteric or hard to grasp. And that's certainly true with the Enneagram. There's lots of Enneagram systems and teachers out there that are great, but I don't think it's been sticky enough in our culture because it can become a little too complicated very quickly. And so this way I keep it lighter at the surface. And for those who want to go deeper into it, my program goes about as deep as you're going to get. I mean, I'm a Kabbalist by nature. Mysticism is my um, bread and butter, if you will. And um, I certainly deal with a lot of Kabbalah and spiritual esoteric stuff in my program, but I also have lots of pop culture. So this is a page. I have music and sports and examples all throughout your ordinary life to bring the Enneagram to life. So let's get into Enneagram 4. Enneagram 4 and 5. If you look behind me, if you're watching video, if not, you've seen the Enneagram. And by the way, if you are just listening, that's fine. You can download this slide at uh, defiantspirit.org on the podcast page at the bottom. But if you are watching, you you see the Enneagram behind me, and the bottom of the Enneagram is four and five. It's at the bottom for a reason, because it's the shadowy side of the Enneagram. It's the lower half. It's four plus five, obviously, equals nine, and it's a counterbalance to the nine above. And so this four and five is really the depth of the Enneagram from a from an emotional and a spiritual intellectual perspective. And these are the most complex types, four and five, bar none. So if you meet a four, if you meet a five, they're very hard to understand. By definition, fours, they, they relish in that. They, they want that. They like that. When you talk to a four about being special, being unique, being impossible to understand, on the one hand, it can bring up a lot of reactive stuff in a four. On the other hand, it can be validating. I'm married to a four. I'm raising a four in one of my children. I have lots of fours in my life. I have a lot of four in me, but I'm not a four. And I see it with them. There's a complexity, sort of a push-pull thing that they do of wanting to be understood, but then really not wanting to be understood. Because if they're understood, then they might be 
ordinary and to be ordinary is like the kryptonite of an Enneagram 4. That's why they're called the individualist, an individuality, a specialness. And in many ways, they are. I mean, in many ways, we all are unique. We all have a fingerprint that's uniquely ours. And Kabbalah says we all have a soul print that's uniquely ours. There never was, is, or will be another you. But for a four, that's on the surface and drives them all day, every day. Okay, so these are some famous four characters that really bring that to life and on many other nuances of the four. So what do we do with the four? Who do we start with in the four? I can't even say, like I said this last time, I can't even say I recognize all these fours um, because I just don't remember. But how about um, Joe Gardner? The movie, Disney's movie Soul, I've done podcasts on it. I love, love, love this movie. It is the Enneagram quintessential for the um the one of the lead characters in it joe gardner the guy in the, the cartoon character with the hat and the glasses right sort of smack dab in the middle or off to the left i guess he um in it wants to be unique wants to be special and he doesn't realize just how unique and special he is and that's the plight of a four you know he's got this great artistic talent he's he's made such an impact on the world and yet it just never feels like enough for him. You know, he's a he's a great musician in the role of a, being a teacher to pay the bills, but um, he just doesn't realize the impact he has upon the kids in his world. And he thinks he has to do something great to, to be a great jazz musician, to be special, when in fact, he really has to just be himself. And that's such a, a for dilemma. They're, they are enough. And this is something that all fours grapple with. All human beings grapple with grapple with it, but especially fours of the not enoughness of life. And if they can just express themselves more, then they'll be special. It's partially why fours are sometimes so hard to understand. They'll speak in paragraphs, not in sentences. They're they're just so much more expressive. That's another name for a four, the expressive. And so they take the depth of human emotion and they express it. And sometimes it's just too much for your not non-fours that we can't digest it. So you'll ask a four how he or she is doing and they might actually tell you. Other types might say fine. And a four might just start sharing with you all the depth of suffering and drama and experience creative expression and you're like I'm drinking from the fire hose of emotion here I just wanted a little sip I didn't necessarily want to have my you know my uh, my, my head blown off with the the fire hose uh, I need a garden hose so um, fours can you know if they're reactive they can inundate you with it they can overdo it when they're in they're all in they have been known to overwhelm their the person across from them oftentimes a partner some type of an emotional relationship that they're in there's a you know people report back it's too much when a four is reactive and i'm looking up here at edward scissor hand edward scissor hands yeah edward scissor hands long time since i've seen that movie but it's definitely four-ish why because well first of all tim burton the um, director is also a four and most of his movies are four-ish but edward scissor hands just, just this suffering this artistic he's an artist but those scissor hands create art but they also cut they cut people around him they cut himself i mean i remember in the movie he has so many scars and wounds of self-cutting i don't have any data for this i do imagine fours um, physically cut themselves probably as teenagers more than other types certainly they are prone towards um drugs, narcotics, alcohol, trying to numb the pain, numb the, the suffering because they feel suffering so much more intensely. This is a hard thing to say, but I think it's important to, to say that I think fours um, tend to take their lives more than any other type. And that's the shadow side of that artistic expression. And if you look at the artists, you know, who did do take their lives, it's it's because they lost control. They went down that path of too much reaction, too much intensity, too much drama, too much suffering. Edward Scissorhands. 
Um, you look at most of these characters and there is this underlying dark brooding quality. I'm looking at the bottom left hand corner now and that is um, Pony Boy Curtis from The Outsiders, one of my favorite books ever. Movie was also quite amazing with quite a cast of characters and that's C. Thomas Howell who I just watched and by the way in um, it was a Paramount TV show. He was the dad um, about the Marine, not the Marine, the Navy SEALs. I think it was SEAL Team 6. Anyways, uh, I couldn't believe that was Pony Boy Curtis, man, all grown up. So, um, C. Thomas Howell's character in a Pony Boy Curtis is a brooding teen. Most teens have a four ish period, whether or not they're fours, especially, you know, when they're in the drama, the push, the pull, the go away from me, come close, go away to me, come close. My son, who's a four, is entering. He's a tween. He's entering his teens in the next year or so. And I am just not looking forward to a brief period of time with him when it, the drama for teens in general is tough. The drama with fours, oof. Because it's one of the ways they've learned to navigate the world. They almost push people away to cause some suffering so they can feel. My son, I've shared this with, with uh, my audience before, but my son... He'll get into the car after school. He's um, in f fifth grade right now. And he'll get into the car and he'll start reporting on all the drama that happened. And then I'll finally get to, well, did any of that actually impact you? Was it yours? No, none of it was. Why is he telling me? Because that's how it's his currency. It's how he deals in the world for his deal in suffering. So Pony Boy Curtis in this and uh, The Outsiders, he's always angsty and pushing and struggling. He also writes beautiful poetry and he's defied his surroundings that are quite ugly with the beauty that comes from within uh, with inside of him and people are drawn to that. Very, very complex and interesting young man. Um, who else are we looking at in here? Looking at, you know, the movie Pulp Fiction. <laughs> has a four-ish vibe to it. It's like lots of artistic movies I notice that don't follow a typical um, narrative arc tend to be four-ish movies. I imagine Quentin Tarantino is either a four or a five because he really created a genre that is just not, it's it's individualistic, right? It doesn't follow the sort of straight and narrow. And that's, that's, a, that's a four thing. They don't like the straight and narrow. It's boring. Life is lived in expression. And so they'll they'll do it themselves. They'll go their own way. Um, fours can really change the world around them, the people around them, inspire. So I'm looking at um, Dead Poet Society with Robin Williams. You know, Robin Williams was a seven, I think. But he had a lot of four in him. And you could see it in his later movies, which were very four-ish. He did another movie called What Dreams May Come. He did a couple other movies that were much more dark and brooding. And I think that's his four-ish side that really came out, that artistic expression. Sevens um, you know, are much more light and easygoing and funny. But underneath the surface of a seven oftentimes is this dark depth of a suffering four that they don't necessarily get in touch with. And Robin Williams, you know, had almost a compartmentalized life where on the outside he was smiling. On the inside he was struggling, obviously, he took his life in 2015. And Dead Poet Society is such a beautiful expression of this man and his, his gift of the artistic expression, inspiring these kids at a, um, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but at a boarding school that aren't used to a teacher like this. You know, they're used to the straight and narrow, the sit down, face forward, memorize facts. And what Robin Williams did was he tried to help free them to get into their artistic spirit to express themselves in a much deeper way. True education, right? Not just being a, a teacher, but being an educator and, and liberating the spirit of, of these young men in the movie was just remarkable. Carpe diem, this seize the day message of it from what I remember. Lots of other um, fours here. I'm going to let you all 
find your way, navigate, um, name that for. These are some great movies, and you'll sift through this. You'll figure out who they are. You'll find them and express them in your own life. And I encourage you to do this with your family. I think that it's a really beautiful exercise to go through these movies, to talk about the Enneagram types that you're seeing in each of um, these characters and in the movies or the television shows that you watch can really bring this good, good stuff to life. I would welcome your recommendations for Enneagram 4s and movies or any of the Enneagram types. Um, I'm always refining this program. I already see some mistakes. I think, I think, um, does Pinocchio, I was trying to decide, is Pinocchio an Enneagram 4? I was thinking maybe an Enneagram 3, but no, actually 4. So maybe that's the right one because he really wants to be a real boy. 4s are constantly striving for realness, wanting to be real, but can get in, you know, into the, um, um, losing themselves in the process and creating some destruction along the way. So anyways, coming back to, um, I would love your recommendations and love to update this, but I would also love to hear from you of um, who these characters are and why you do think they resonate with you as the Enneagram 4. So stay tuned for the Enneagram 5. Until then, discover and defy your number and live your spirit. Jump over to defiantspirit.org so you can download your free ebook, Nine Enneagram Types, Walk Into a Bar, and this is how they react and they respond. It's another way you can find your Enneagram type so you can discover it and defy it. Until then, talk to you soon.